In this video we're going to give you an introduction to all the standard modelling tools within Aspire in order to help us create this flourish that you can see on the screen here. I'm going to start with a set of vectors that have already been pre-drawn in the software as we really want to focus on the modelling for this particular example. These vectors will be converted into 3D shapes by using the modelling tools that we have available in Aspire. Each one will be used to create a separate 3D component and together all these components are what makes up the 3D part that you can see on the screen here and ultimately what we'll create toolpaths for in the companion tutorial to this. So let's start the example by opening a new copy of Aspire and we're going to choose the option to open an existing file. Now click on that and from the project folder for this example I'm going to choose the file fleur de -lis -vector crv 3 d and hit the open button. We can see now our set of vectors shown to us in the 2D view here so we can see more, more clearly what's happening as we select these vectors and create 3D shapes with them. I'm going to tile the windows so we can see both the 2D and the 3D view at the same time. Let's come up and click on the icon here to tile the windows and this icon will tile them vertically so the 2D view is now displayed on the left of my interface and the 3D view is displayed on the right. As we already have our vectors drawn we won't need the tools on the drawing tab at the moment so I'm going to come straight down to the bottom of the interface and click on the modeling tab in order to go over to the tools that we have to take these vectors and start to create 3D components with them. The first shape that I'd like to make is the middle part of my fleur de lis which is represented by this closed vector here. With that selected let's come up and click on the icon here to create shape from vectors the first of our modeling tools. This allows me to assign a profile to a closed vector. We can choose from curved, angular or flat here. In this case I'm going to choose the curved option which we already have selected and I can assign different parameters to this shape in order to control it within the form here. I'm going to keep things simple and just use a slider and slide this up so that it's at around 60 degrees. When I let go you can see that we see a preview of the shape in the 2D and the 3D view. I could continue to adjust this if I wanted, changing the values and getting different variations on my shape there. So I say we'll go with something around 60 degrees in this case. I'm happy with that so I'm going to come down and I'm going to change the name of that and we'll just call that middle and hit apply and close. So now we've created our first 3D component and we can see that listed in the component tree here. We can see it's been assigned the name that I gave it, middle, and it's showing me that the combine mode is currently set to add. That's what this icon does here. The checkbox lets me either draw or undraw my 3D component. The next component that I'd like to make is going to be a swept shape. For this we're going to use two vectors to define the outline of the shape and that's going to be this vector here. If I select on that you can see that's one vector and then if I click to select this vector you can see that's a second separate vector. And what we're going to do is use those to define each side of our shape and sweep a cross section, in this case this vector, along those two vectors. To do this we're going to use the two rail sweep function. So I'm going to come up under the modeling tools, click on the icon for two rail sweep and then I'm going to select this vector first by clicking on it. I'm going to hold the shift key down on the keyboard and select this vector second so that they're both now currently in my selection and then I'm going to come up and click on the button to use selection. That's going to take those two vectors and now define them as the two rails for my shape. Next I need to select the cross section that I'd like to sweep along those two vectors. In this case I just want to use a single cross section so I can just click this vector here and you can see that the apply button has now become available to me because I have the correct set of vectors um, currently that will allow me to create a shape using the two rail sweep function. Within the form I want to make sure that scale cross sections with width is checked what that's going to do is actually change the height of my cross section as it sweeps along depending how wide the distance is between the two rails and I also want to have sweep between spans checked. I'm going to go ahead and give this the name side and hit apply and we can take a look in the 3D view I can zoom in here 
and we can see that that shape looks quite good you can see it tapers up and down depending on the width that's due to this option here if we uncheck that and hit apply you can see how it's just going to be a constant height all the way around come back click on scale cross section with width hit apply you can see how the shape changes as it sweeps around between these two curves now if we look carefully here we've got a slight overlap between these two shapes and I can see I've created kind of a crease there where the two of them are actually adding together because the combined mode is currently set to add what I would like to do is have these shapes merge together so I'm going to change this to merge we can see that crease has gone now and the two are just blending together where they overlap if I'm happy with the way that looks I can go ahead and hit close now and we can just take a look at that in the 3D view we can see that looks correct let's go back to looking down the z-axis again next I'd like to take that component we just created and make a symmetrical mirrored copy of it on the other side of my job I can either select the component from the component tree by clicking on its name or I could click on the grayscale in the 2D view or I can double click on the component in the 3D view here all of those you see will highlight in all three of those places no matter which one I choose with that selected I'm going to come up and click on the icon to mirror selected objects I want to make sure flip about job center is checked because I want this to symmetrically mirror across the middle of the part and I also want to create a mirrored copy I want to leave the original where it is and create a new component over on the other side so with these two boxes checked I'm going to click on the button to flip horizontal and we can see the software makes a copy of our component based on that and we can see now that's just been repeated in the list here so now in our component tree we have our middle component and then merging with that we have one side and merging with that we have the other side for the next shape I'd like to create the tie that goes across the middle of our fleur-de-lis so we can see a little more clearly what's going on I'm going to zoom into the 2D view I'm going to come up and click on the zoom box icon here and then I'm just going to drag a box that encloses the middle and my cross sections over on the right there so now we've zoomed in we can see that more clearly to go out of the zoom mode I'm going to click on the selection mode arrow and again I'm going to use the two rail sweep in order to sweep this shape but on the edges I want to have this cross section here and in the middle I want to have this taller cross section that has a different shape with the two rail sweep we can either go into the function first and select the vectors or I can pre-select my two rails so I'm going to click on this vector then shift and click on this vector go into the two rail sweep icon click on the button that says use selection we can see those have now been selected we have my red one is going to be my left hand rail as we look along this shape and my green one is going to be my right hand rail as we look along this shape now we're going to choose this cross section here so I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to come across and then just click on the start point of my vector my rail now that's assigned that cross section to both ends so I have a small cross section at both ends of my shape if I wanted to now we could set this to merge I'm going to make sure that I have scale cross section unchecked I want the software just to use its height of the cross sections here as I've drawn them I'm going to type in the word tie and we'll hit apply now you can see we have that going small cross section to small cross section across the middle of the part and if I zoom into the 3D view that's just cutting through the part there what I want to do is introduce this cross section into the middle in order to raise that part up and add this kind of dip shape in here to do that I'm going to select this cross section and then I'm just going to click on the rail where I want to add it and we can see the software has added that it's shown me that there's a yellow node on here for this cross section which is displayed here on this side of my rail my red node on here is displayed here and here so I can see that I now have a shape that's going to go from the small cross section to this larger cross section in the middle and then to the small cross section at the other end let's hit apply so that we can actually assign those different profiles and there we can see the shape we've created and how that goes raises up and down there in order to create my tie in the middle of the part if I wanted to I could always come in and adjust those size shapes as I wanted in order to change what we'd get if I'm happy with that though I can go ahead and hit close 
and now I'm just going to come over and click on the icon to zoom to fit so we have the 3D view selected so that's zoomed there if I want to zoom the 2D view I just need to click in the 2D view and then click on the icon to zoom to fit there let's just zoom into the 3D view again we can do that just by right mouse clicking and moving the mouse away from us and I can see that tie shape we've created looks quite nice it's got these nice rounded edges here but at the end it's just got this kind of squarer edge what I'd like to do is just blend that off that's easy to do in the software we can just select the component so I can double click on it in the 3D view I can come up and choose the interactive sculpting icon here and this allows me to treat a component as if it was like a piece of virtual clay so I can choose the smooth option which is the first option here I'm going to go with a fairly small diameter around 50 strength maybe around 10 smoothness we'll put in the middle around 50 there I'm going to come over into the 3D view and you can see at the moment the cursor is shown in grey if I click it's shown in red and that's indicating to me that I'm sculpting at the moment I'm not on the shape so I'm not doing anything if we move this over the shape and I click and then drag you can see how that just smooths out the end there we can do the same on the other side just go over smoothing that out if I zoom in there you can see how that has smoothed out the end there and we no longer have that flat shape on it if I'm happy with that I can hit keep and OK and now we can see where that's been reintegrated back into the rest of our components and we're just very easily able to um, manipulate that dynamically by using the sculpting tool just to smooth off that edge for our next shape we're going to create the border using this oval vector here as a single drive rail and extrude this cross section this vector along it if we zoom in there we can see that shape so I'm going to come over and click on the icon this time to extrude a shape which is the third modeling tool icon in this case this is like a single rail sweep in as I'm going to select this vector as my drive rail click on the button to use selection and then I'm going to select this vector as my cross section here so I'm going to come down the form use vector cross sections create square corners uh, won't apply in this case because I don't have any square corners on my drive rail so I can leave that checked or unchecked sweep between spans will leave checked and I make sure that the weave is unchecked scale to height is unchecked and I'm going to set the combine mode to add for this because it's not overlapping with any of my other components and we'll give this component the name border and hit apply and then we can see it taking that cross section and sweeping it around that oval shape if I'm happy with that then we can hit close we can see that component's been added to the component tree and for our last shape I'd like to create a dome that goes from the edge of our border and just raises everything up on a rounded shape now we can see we don't have a vector that represents the edge at the moment I could either draw an oval in there or what I could also do is fit a vector around the outside of the component in order to get a vector that goes around the outside of that shape that we just extruded so if we want to do that I can select the grayscale and click on it in the 2D view in this case I'm going to come up and click on the icon here to create vector boundary from selected components when I click on that it's going to create a vector that's both on the inside and the outside of my part if I click here you can see they're both selected and that shows me that they're in a group if I want to ungroup them then we can just select them there I can come over and click on the icon here to ungroup objects and now we can see that I've got two separate vectors one on the outside one on the inside I'm going to select this inside vector and I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard in order to remove that because I don't need that so now I'm going to come across click on the icon to create shape from vectors I'm going to select this vector we just fitted to the outside of our border grayscale I'm going to make sure the profile option is the round one here at the top and I'm going to set the angle to 25 degrees so that we can create a shallow dome that we can add to all our other components I'm going to check the combine mode is set to add which is the first one I'm going to give this the name dome I'm going to hit apply and we can see the components been created if I hit close we'll see that added to our component tree and it's probably worth taking a moment here just to look at our components in the component tree how they're ordered and how that gives us the result we can see in the 3D view 
Probably the best way to show this is to undraw all the components we have and then switch them on one at a time showing how the software internally is combining them to create our composite model or what we see in the 3D view. So let's come up and click on the check mark here next to where it says component tree and that will all undraw all the components. If I switch the first one on we can see it's combined mode if we hover over it or look at the icon there set to add. Because we have nothing in the part at this stage, and that's adding to nothing, we just see the component there. And the combined mode is not really too important unless we actually wanted to make it a negative shape, in which case we'd have set that to subtract. The next component in the list to the side is set to merge. If we switch that on, we can see that we set that to merge because there was a slight overlap between those two and we wanted them to blend together. The other side was created by mirroring that so it took on the same combined mode. We could change that if we wanted after we'd created the mirrored copy. And the tie is also set to merge as well. And that's important because we need it to blend through these components. If I zoom in and I was to change the combined mode for that, if I right mouse click on it, go to combine mode and set it to add, you can see that we get a totally different result because now the pixels um, in each of those components are being added together to push the Z heights up so we get um, what is effectively the combination of all those shapes just stacked up on each other. If we set that combine mode by right mouse clicking back to merge then that just goes back to just blending through and only keeping the highest pixels from each component as to what it displays in the 3D view. Let's just go back to the ISO view in the 3D view there. If we switch on the border component that's set to add and because it doesn't overlap anything that doesn't really matter. We're not looking for it to blend we're just looking for it to add into the model. Only when components overlap is it really crucial in terms of the combine mode. Lastly we have the dome which overlaps with everything and that's set to add and even though it's the last thing we created and appears to be the most dominant by looking at the grayscale order in the 2D view, it's just adding all the pixels for that dome to everything underneath it and that just gives the effect of all the previous components effectively sitting on top and following the shape of that dome. If we maximize the 3D view and look at this from the side you can see the shape of the dome and how the other components just appear to follow that and that's just because it's adding the pixels between each of those different shapes within the 3D view to create this final version that we call the composite model. What we see in the 3D view is extremely important because when we calculate any 3D toolpath this is what the software is going to use to govern the shape of that toolpath based on whatever tooling and other parameters we assign. So if a component is not drawn then it won't be machined. Anything you see in the 3D view is what's going to be cut when you do the toolpath calculation. Let's go back up and click on the icon to tile the windows vertically again so we can see the 2D and the 3D view. And before we finish I'd like to actually make some edits to some of the components. One of the most powerful features within the software is that each individual component is editable until it's baked together with other components in the part. So at this stage I could still go in and individually select pieces of my fleur de lis and then change the shape or size or orientation within the job. At the moment though, within the 2D view, the most prominent grayscale is the dome because that's the most recently created shape. That makes it hard for me to select and see how I would edit the other shapes within the job. So what I want to do is change the order of these grayscales. I'm going to right mouse click with that selected and choose the option to move to back. That's just made that grayscale go to the back in terms of the order that I see them displayed in the 2D view. That has absolutely no bearing on how these components are combined or what we see in the 3D view. That's always determined purely by the order in the component tree and the combined mode as we were discussing before. What that has done though is made it more easy for me to select the different parts in the job from the 2D view and to dynamically edit these. For instance, I might want to come in, select the middle part here, and decide that I'd actually like to stretch that down a bit. If I click it again, I can go into the transform mode, which gives me these handles around the outside, and now I can click on this bottom middle one with the mouse and just drag that down in order to increase the size, and you can see that's automatically updated in the 3D view as well. As soon as I let go of it, you could see that, and the component's been changed. Now another important thing to note there is that my original vector that I used to model that has not been changed. 
The only time there's any link between a vector and the component you create from it is at the moment you hit apply while you're in the modeling tool. As soon as you've finished creating a shape from a vector then there's no connection between the two and you can continue to edit them individually without affecting the other one. At this stage what I'd like to do next is move my other three uh, components that represent my parts in the fleur de lis down in order to match the shape that we've just stretched there. Now I could either select them by clicking in the 2D view here and holding the shift key down and picking them or I could come over and select them from the list as well. So I could click on side, I could hold the shift key down and click on tie, that will select the one in between as well. Now with those three selected here again, I could either click on them once more to go into the transform mode, or I could come over and click on the icon here, which will also take me into the transform mode. You can see again, that's showing me these handles, and now what I could do is click over the middle one of the squares here, and I'm going to hold the shift key down which means that I'll drag either horizontally or vertically and I'm going to drag these down so that they change position and I can again see that's updated in the 3D view and the 2D view to show me my new design. Here we've just made fairly simple changes to our individual components but you can see with the more powerful editing tools that are available within Aspire just how much you can do with your existing 3D objects once you've created them. And that's not only in this session of the software, but also by saving these or copying and pasting them and using them in other sessions and other designs. This also shows you how powerful the set of clip art that comes with Aspire is as well, because you can import those and manipulate them using the same set of editing tools. So at this point, we're almost finished with this example. I'm going to go ahead and save this file. I'm going to go up to File, Save As. And in the project folder, I'm going to call this fleur de lis modelcrv 3 d So if you wanted, you can open that and see it at exactly the stage that I've saved it here. We're going to use this model in the next tutorial to show you how we would create toolpaths on this example in order to create the data so we can machine it on our CNC. Before we finish, let's take a moment to summarise some of the things we've looked at. We started by opening a file that had a set of vectors that had previously been drawn in Aspire. We used these with the modeling tools to create a set of components, starting with the middle part and using the Create Shape tool to assign a round profile to it, then using the two rail sweep to model the two sides and the tie that goes across the middle. Then we used the extrude tool in order to create the oval border. Then we fitted a vector to the outside of that border and used that vector in order to create the dome shape that all the other components sit on top of to make our finished part. Finally, we showed you how we can adjust individual components to change them even after they've been modelled. So that concludes this video and in the following tutorial we'll look at taking the part we've created here and calculating the toolpaths for it.